Well, it still surprises me how many questions I still get about Southfield Reservoir. I suppose when you look at the back catalog of the videos that I've done there, I guess it's not surprising. So what I thought I'd do is tonight is just a quick Q&A all about the bream mecca that is Southfield Reservoir. Whilst it's really rare for me to fish a match at Southfield, obviously I still get asked loads and loads of questions about it, but obviously that's because of the back catalogue of videos. I love fishing there, I love the style of fishing there, I love the crack and I think the, the setup is brilliant, what Mick Axon and Andy Renton have, have put together there. It's a really great setup and I'd love to make changes next year and just fish there a little bit more. Tonight is really just to go through loads of the questions, the really basic questions about what the venue is, what it's like. There are loads of people all over the country that want to fish qualifiers there, they want to fish open matches there, but there are also a lot of local lads in local clubs that fish the venue regularly because it gets used quite a lot by the club members as well. So they all want to kind of know what it's all about and what it entails. So tonight I've got a few questions that are going to answer all those basic kind of ifs and buts about the venue, just from my experience and what I know about the venue. One of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is when people see aerial shots or whatever, or they see it on the map about how deep is it. It could have been much more simple to answer that purely because it's the same depth just about all the way across everywhere. It's about four to five feet deep maximum. That is it. That is it. We've actually seen there are areas of it that's used by windsurfers and, and you know members of the yachting club. And sometimes we see them come off their surfboards or, or windsurfers and they just stand up and walk back to it, you know, so it's really, really shallow. And that is the same across the whole of the reservoir. One of the questions you get asked all the time is really about the pegging and the actual um, the platforms. You know, they've obviously seen some platforms on some photos and no platforms on others. Basically, pegs one to ten, which are in the East Lake, as they call it. They don't have platforms, but it's really, really shallow close in, and you don't need a platform. You can just get in the water with a box that's got legs. It, you know, it is really nice and comfortable once you're in. And then you come over into the East Lake, and that is the main bulk of where the, the match pegs are. The first few pegs along the canal bank aren't platformed, so again, it's really nice and shallow close in, so you can just get in, and it's solid as well. You know, it's all on rock and it's, it's sturdy. You're not sinking in, so that's along the canal bank. And then you come up what we call the long bank. And that's right the way up from about peg 30, I think it is, right the way up to 60. I think the last peg with a platform is about 64, I think, something like that, give or take a peg. And then after that, it is pegged in matches if the numbers allow, but there aren't any platforms past about peg 64. But it is, you know, relatively easy to get down and you don't always need, need a platform. Some lads prefer platforms, as always, but I never use a platform there, I just use my box. I get asked about the species all the time. It's one of the venues where, you know, most times of the year, not all year round, but most of the time, your, your plan and your approach, it can be really quite simple in the sense that you're only really targeting bream. At certain times of year, there are some roach in there, some small hybrids, and you can really rack up 10, 12, 14 pound of them if you're really good on the pole, or some lads accumulate that on a whip as well. There are odd occasions where you can put nets of small fish together on the feeder, but that's, it's not very often, you know, and it's not, you know, through the majority of the year. The vast majority of the year you're targeting skimmers and bream up to about three pound. They do run to five pound, but I think the average, I haven't been for a long, long time, but the average I believe now is, is, is around that pound and a half sort of bracket, but there have been lots of hybrids in there through the middle part of this summer. Is it all open water fishing? You probably already answered that by looking at some of the footage that I put on tonight for you. It's all open water fishing. It's not only feeder, you can compete on the pole through the summer months, warmer months, but in the winter, the fish tend to stay out in the open water and that's why the feeder dominates. Well, I've been asked a few times as well about the pegging. They've said, can you fish all the way around? No, you can't. Most of it you can't actually get to. So, as you can see from this aerial footage now, if we swing round, over, as you can see that's the the yacht club there and as you can see as we pan up all this section here you cannot fish there's a few pegs here that you can fish but they're never pegged in the matches or incredibly rare if they are but usually pleasure pegs all this section here you cannot get to it's just not pegged I mean you're probably looking at a total of about 150 acres in total you actually drive in here 
along this line, along the canal. The canal runs down there as well. The canal runs all the way down that far bank and then shoots off in that direction. You can see, to, see it shooting off into the, into, the, uh, into the distance. The pegs are along this bank. The permanent actual platforms are up to about here, which is about peg 64, something like that. Then after that, this section here is pegged, but there aren't platforms there, but it's not too difficult to get down. So the platforms run all the way down, down to about peg 30, somewhere there, and then along that bank. And then the other side of the split, there are just 10 pegs from that corner to that little point there that you can see. That's where it runs back into the canal. And that is it. That is the only section in that part of the petition where you can actually fish during the matches so as you can see if we pan back round you can just get an idea of how much water there is there just an incredible amount of water how do you book onto matches I get asked that all the time they've devised their own system now where you book on the matches through Facebook obviously Andy Renton and Mick Axon are still running the matches there and do an absolute fantastic job of getting the results on and, and just making sure every match runs really nice and smooth and they take the names and do it it's just really ran in a really nice way but it's done through the Facebook page that Facebook page is called New Fish Southfield Reservoir if you just like that you'll be kept in the loop with all the future matches All their matches all the time, I get asked that because obviously there's lots of people that just want to go out there and, and just check it out, have a day's pleasure fishing and you know, don't get me wrong, it's an absolutely fantastic match venue but it's a really nice place to go and pleasure fish as well, you know. And they do allow all sorts of different methods whilst you're pleasure fishing. During the matches they do have their own rules and you know, they are with everyone's intentions to keep the venue a success, you know. They don't allow the method. Um, there's a 50 centimeter hook length rule. All these kind of things, I believe, are on the uh, on the Facebook page as well. But just be really, really wary of those if you are going to go in any of the matches there. But when you're pleasure fishing, it's almost anything goes. But you always check the Doncaster and District website first. The brilliant thing about the Doncaster website is that it's actually got listed on there where the matches are. You can simply log on to their website, and if you go to the, this tab here, booked waters, click on that. That will give you a list of all the matches that are on the Doncaster and District's waters for the next, I don't know what it is, two or three weeks, something like that. As you can see, if we scroll down, for example, we've got the 25th of July, which is a Wednesday, Southfield Reservoir, pegs 25 to 70, and it tells you who's running the match and the, you know what club's running it. Fantastic. So if you want to plan a trip there, you can just quickly and easily go onto the ddaa.co.uk site, and that'll tell you exactly where you can and can't fish. I know loads of you watch my videos from Southfield, like I say, I only probably fish there in matches two or three times a year, you know, and I'd like to make a change to that next year, I'd like to fish there a little bit more if I can, so hopefully the calendar and other events is going to allow me to do that. For those of you that, that haven't seen my videos from there, right at the end of this video there will be a nice rectangle just about there that will take you direct to the playlist of all the live match videos that I've done at Southfield Reservoir. So that's it for tonight, don't forget there's a video every single night this month thanks for watching already i really appreciate it hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already that'll keep you in the loop with every single video that comes on so many different topics being covered this month so uh, and i really appreciate the feedback you guys have been giving me as regards telling you what kind of content you want to see and if you want to see some more in-depth coaching type videos then please check out patreon tv it's a brand new thing that's just only just come online the link is directly below this video Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget there's another video tomorrow and hit subscribe and that'll keep you in the loop with everything. Have a great evening and I'll see you all tomorrow.